Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Engage session, which will feature several Goddard-led public engagement and citizen science programs. My name is Laura Bleacher, and I'm from our Office of Communications. Also with me from the Office of Communications, but behind the scenes, is Travis Woolrab, who's making all of this run smoothly. So thank you very much, Travis. Our office sponsors the Engage series so that Goddard's employees may better understand the center's work, especially that outside your normal area. So we greatly appreciate your participation and your interest today. We hope you'll find today's presentations both enlightening and timely, since one of the programs that will be discussed is International Observe the Moon Night, which takes place this Saturday, September 26th. In addition to International Observe the Moon Night, we'll also hear about other great opportunities to stay engaged and active in citizen science during this time of social distancing and virtual learning, including the Globe Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment program, uh, tips for observing the sun, and uh, especially during eclipses. And while I have your attention, I'll go ahead and plug our next Engage session for next month on October 19th, which will feature the OSIRIS-REx mission as it prepares for its first sample collection attempt the following day. But before we get started with today's presentations, I do have a little bit of housekeeping to cover. We'll hold Q&A until all three of today's speakers have presented. So please use the chat box to ask a question. For closed captioning, hover over the video and press the CC button in the bottom right. If you don't see the chat box or the CC option, you may want to try opening the Ustream link in a different browser. For me personally, it works best in Chrome. And please note that this session is being recorded and will be made available later at the same Ustream link. So now it's my pleasure to introduce our three speakers for today. First, we'll hear from Dr. Trina Farrell, Goddard's Earth Science, Education, and Public Outreach Lead. In addition to this role, she's presently an adjunct professor at the University of Maryland, where she teaches biology and environmental science. She was awarded the Maya Angelou Teacher of the Year Award for first year and is also a member of Who's Who Among Outstanding Teachers in America. Next, we'll hear from Kara Lening, an informal education specialist in Goddard's Heliophysics Science Division and the NASA Space Science Education Consortium. For the total solar eclipses in 2006, 2008, and 2017, she worked with fellow team members to provide educational resources in both English and Spanish. And last but not least, we'll hear from Stacy Tidekin. Stacy is the Outreach Coordinator for Goddard Solar System Exploration Division and the International Partnership Coordinator for International Observe the Moon Night. She loves to incite wonder in others through public engagement activities and being an information link between the world of planetary science and the general public is something she is incredibly passionate about. So as you can see, we have a great group of speakers today and we are going to get started with Trina. Thank you very much, Laura. And good afternoon, everyone. I am excited to be here and I'm honored, thank you. So first slide, please. I'm excited to tell you about the GLOBE program. Next slide, please. All right, so GLOBE, the GLOBE program. GLOBE stands for Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment. It's an international science and education program with participants in over 120 countries help us to collect data using over 50 scientific protocols and they can actually upload their observations to our global database. And we're excited to say that in 2016, GLOBE released a mobile app, just you can use your phone, called the GLOBE Observer, making it even easier to become involved in citizen science efforts. There are currently four tools in this app and over 160,000 users. And on this slide, you can see some of our other partners. Thank you. Next slide, please. So with the Globe Observer app, we said there was four different tools. You can go outside and observe clouds, land cover, tree height, and even mosquitoes. But I would like to say during, the, during this period of COVID, please be safe if you are taking any measurements outdoors. So these are the four different things that you can do with the Globe Observer app. You can take measurements of pictures of clouds, 
land cover, tree height, and even mosquitoes. And if some people ask about mosquitoes, yes, even mosquitoes. You can actually look at standing water that's in your area and observe the larva that's in that water. And you can do that by purchasing a fairly inexpensive microscope that you can actually attach to your phone and you can help us to identify the mosquito larva that's in that water. Next slide, please. So here are some stats we're quite proud of. Globe by numbers. We're in over 100, about 123 countries. 37, a little over 37,000 schools and over 40,000 teachers. So we're pretty excited about this. You can read our other stats there. And then just this year in 2020, we had a cloud challenge recently. And during that cloud challenge, we were excited. We had over 26,000 observations from more than 80 countries. And we also did some satellite matches. And we had close to over 27,000 of these and over 66,000 photos were received. So we are quite excited about these numbers and we'd like to have higher numbers. So please feel free to download this app. It's a free app on your phone and join us, come participate. Next slide, please. So here I've listed some resources for you related to the four different things that I just mentioned. I've, been, I've listed some cloud resources, mosquitoes, land cover, and trees. And with GLOBE, you can also do some e-trainings as well. And the GLOBE visualization system. So these are a plethora of different resources. Great, next slide, please. So please feel free to join us in our citizen science efforts. We look forward to having more people on our team. And like I said, this app is free. You can download it from the App Store or from Google Play. Next slide, please. So switching efforts, I wanna make sure that everybody's aware that Landsat 9 is gonna be launching in the middle of 2021. And so we are very, very excited in Earth Sciences. We wanna make sure that everybody's aware of this. And here's a little bit of information about Landsat 9. So Landsat 9 is a, mission, it's a joint partnership between NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey. And we are looking forward to its launch date in the middle of 2021. So in closing, I want to thank everybody for listening. And please, please pick up your phones and download the Globe Observer app. I'm excited to see some more, some new scientists on our team. Thank you very much. Have a great day and please stay safe. Thank you, Trina. I appreciate that. Um, I definitely am looking forward to using the app with my family, um, especially before the uh, winter weather sets in. So um, definitely looking forward to those uh, resources that you mentioned. Thank you. All right. And next up, we are going to have Carolyn Ng, who's going to talk with us about solar observing. Thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be here to share with you some observations of the sun. On the cover slide on the left, you will see the drawing of an 1816 eclipse by Temple. And in the center is a coronagraph image taken by the SOHO satellite. A coronagraph simulates a solar eclipse blocking the sun's outer atmosphere. 
Eruptions like the one depicted in Temple's drawing actually are common observations. And on the right is a composite of multiple photographs taken at the uh, solar eclipse. Next slide. Where were you on August 21st, 2017? Millions of people experienced a solar eclipse in the United States. Doctors Yari Colado Vega and Alex Young co-anchored a NASA program for several hours as the eclipse traversed from Oregon to South Carolina. Dr. Alex Young is the Associate Director for Science in the Heliophysics Science Division and the PI for NASA Space Science Education Consortium, which supported NASA's overall education and outreach efforts during the eclipse. But why did NASA get involved in observing a total solar eclipse? Next slide. NASA has missions and programs that study science in five major areas that are relevant to eclipses namely the sun, the moon, and earth. On the right is an infographic showing NASA's teams on the ground, airplanes and balloons in the air, and a fleet of satellites in space. And scientists definitely hope to coordinate their efforts again for the next total solar eclipse. Next slide. Growing up, I loved hiking with my parents to a hilltop to see sunrise and strolling by the waters to see sunset. Little did I know that I would actually work with many to share the wonders of the sun. Next slide. First, let's review some fun facts about the sun. On the right are some numbers. The sun is the largest object in the solar system. More than 100 Earths fit across the diameter and more than a million Earths fit inside the sun. Although it is our closest star, it's quite far away at 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers. And it's hot. The surface temperature is about 6,000 degrees Kelvin. Well, these are all big numbers. How can one fathom the size and the distance? On the left is a scale model. Imagine the sun is the size of a basketball. Earth is not even a marble, but just a tiny little dot. Next slide. To demonstrate the distance between the sun and Earth at this scale, Download the solar pizza, which is a cardboard disc um, from the Johns Hopkins website uh, from the Parker Solar Pro Toolkit. You have to remove the image of Earth at the perforations and hold up both the sun and Earth at 75 feet apart. At this scale, guess where Parker Solar Pro belongs at its closest approach actually at only three feet. So Parker is at three feet from the sun. Once you help children and adults to visualize the scale, they'll be blown away. Next slide. If you observe the sun through a telescope with a proper filter, you may see sunspots. These are spots on the surface that appear darker than its surroundings due to lower temperatures. Sunspots are regions of intense magnetic activity. So strong are the magnetic fields that they block some of the sunlight from reaching us. Sunspots are often the sources of solar flares and coronal mass ejections. They can be as big as Earth or even the size of Jupiter. Next slide. The corona is the area just above the surface. While the surface is about 5,000, 6,000 degrees, the temperature in the corona is several million degrees hot. That doesn't make sense, right? When you have something in the oven and you move away, you expect the temperature to be lower. 
Why is the sun's atmosphere so much hotter than its surface? Parker Solar Probe may help us solve this mystery. The corona is the extended outer atmosphere of the sun, which is much larger than the volume of the sun itself. From the corona emerges the solar wind, which is a flow of charged particles and magnetic fields. And the solar wind fuels actually the entire solar system. Do you know that we all live in the atmosphere of the sun? Normally, the corona is hidden by the bright light of the sun, and that's why we need a coronagraph on SOHO and stereo missions to produce artificial eclipses so that we can see the sun's fainter outer atmosphere. Next slide. During a total solar eclipse, the sun's corona can be seen shining in all directions with very fine scale structures. Mind you, not a partial, but a total solar eclipse. Isn't that beautiful? Next slide. Usually, eclipse chasers have to travel all over the world to see a total solar eclipse. But within a seven year period, Americans are treated to two total solar eclipses. In 2017, from Oregon to South Carolina, and in 2024, from Mexico through Texas and North and uh, New York State, all the way into Canada. This map is produced by Ernie Wright of the Scientific Visualization Studio. Next slide. Remember those glasses? Well, they are not just for eclipse. If your glasses are not damaged, you may use them for solar viewing at any time. Next slide. Better yet, if you have telescope with the proper filter, you will see images of a quiet sun during solar minimum. Every 11 years or so, the sun's magnetic field completely flips. This means that the sun's north and south poles switch places. In the middle of that cycle, the sunspot numbers and solar activities will peak. Last week, NASA and NOAA scientists announced the onset of sunspot cycle 25. So in the next few years, you expect to see more sunspots and more solar activities, reaching a maximum around 2024 and 2025. If you don't have a solar telescope, don't worry. Go online and see the sun now, courtesy of Solar Dynamics Observatory, which has been flying for 10 years. Next slide. Parker Solar Probe was launched in 2018 as the first mission to touch the sun. Early results showed some switchbacks, which are S-shaped kings on the right in the magnetic field line streaming from the sun. As the fastest flying satellite, Parker is progressively getting closer to the sun. You may follow this mission to decipher mysteries about the corona and the solar wind. Next slide. The Solar Orbiter is a joint ESA-NASA mission launched in February 2020, just a few months ago, with a camera that saw some stunning images of miniature solar flares near the sun's surface. And scientists call them campfires. As the orbiter gets even closer to the sun, we will learn more for sure about its polar regions. Also, a solar mission called PUNCH is launching in 2024. Next slide. In 2017, some of you may have downloaded and printed a map of our nation or a specific state with the path of eclipse on it. These pinhole projectors allow you to design and personalize your device to experience a partial eclipse while safely viewing it. They are great alternatives to the solar viewing glasses. And our team will soon post the 2024 maps online on the STEAM Innovation Lab website. Next slide. What if you cannot see a solar eclipse in person due to locations or some other constraints? 
The Eclipse Soundscapes project allows everyone to experience the events, including people who are visually impaired and others who are unable to see the eclipse with their own eyes. That mobile application includes audio descriptions of the eclipse in real time, an interactive rumble map that allows users to visualize the eclipse through touch and sound. And Spanish will be added in the next version in time for 2023 and 2024. Next slide. Did I say 2023? Yes, mark your calendar for Saturday, October 14, 2023. There will be an annual solar eclipse visible from Oregon to Texas. An annual solar eclipse occurs as the new moon moves in front of the sun, but does not cover the suns completely, creating a so-called ring of fire. This will be a dry run for the entire continent to get ready for 2024. Next slide. On Monday, April 8th, 2024, almost everyone, almost in North America, will see a partial eclipse and some lucky ones will see total solar eclipse. If you have friends and families living along the path of totality, you might want to contact them now and save your spots. Last slide. NASA worked with the National Science Foundation, the American Astronomical Society, and several others on a safe viewing flyer. WAS still posted it on their website. So are you ready for solar max and the next solar eclipse? Practice safe viewing with telescopes on the ground, follow NASA solar missions, enjoy the sun every day, and mark your calendar for Monday, April 8, 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, that was great information. Um, and 2024 will certainly be an exciting year between the total solar eclipse and the planned landing of um, NASA astronauts on the moon with Artemis 3. So definitely a lot to look forward to there. Thank you. Uh, and speaking of the moon, we are now going to transition to Stacy, who's going to tell us about International Observe the Moon Night taking place this Saturday. Thanks, Laura. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm excited to be able to talk to you all about International Observe the Moon Night, which is actually coming up this Saturday. Um, so next slide, please. Um, before I get into our discussion about International Observe the Moon Night, I always like to share this slide, uh, which shows the wide range of things I get to do for my job, plus one image that doesn't quite fit with the rest. Um, so the one in the upper left demonstrates that I really like Harry Potter. Um, but so my role for International Observe the Moon Night is that of International Partnership Coordinator. Um, so I get to work with people all around the world. My favorite International Observe the Moon Night memory is actually from last year's event. Um, I was trying to record new, uh, recruit new international partners and decided to reach out to the German Space Agency. Uh, now on their website, they just had a generic contact us form. So I filled it out describing who I was and asking if they'd like to get involved in International Observe the Moon Night. Um, so I wasn't really expecting to hear back since this was a random cold call to a space agency, uh, but I did hear back and the person who responded was very enthusiastic. It was awesome. Um, so with that, I would like to show you all a trailer, a video for uh, International Observe the Moon Night. So if you could play the video, please. Can you go to the next slide then, please? 
you. And so that was a quick glimpse into what International Observe the Moon Night is all about. Uh, before jumping into further details, I wanted to briefly mention the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter since it helped to inspire International Observe the Moon Night with, an, with its launch back in 2009. Uh, LRO is NASA's flagship mission at the moon. It's the longest lived lunar spacecraft mission in history. It's been orbiting the moon for over 10 years now. And it's a mission that's building on the legacy of Apollo, reshaping our understanding of our nearest neighbor in space and revealing an unexpectedly dynamic world right beside our own. And it's also paving the way for our return to the moon's surface with humans by 2024 through the Artemis program. So it's a really exciting mission to be a part of. Next slide, please. So International Observe the Moon Night is a worldwide celebration of lunar science and exploration, celestial observation, and our cultural and personal connections to the moon. One day each year, we invite everyone on Earth to observe, learn about, and celebrate the moon together. People participate by attending or hosting events or as individual lunar observers. People also connect online with fellow lunar enthusiasts around the world through social media. International Observe the Moon Night occurs annually in September or October when the moon is around first quarter. Uh, this is a great phase for evening observing and for observing the moon through a telescope. The best lunar observing is typically along the moon's terminator, which is the line between uh, night and day on the moon. Uh, this is because shadows are the longest um, during a first quarter phase rather than at full moon. And this is an image taken by a participant in Brazil during last year's event. Uh, you can see all the craters really well along the terminator, and you can also see Saturn to the upper right of the moon. I love this image because it shows that International Observe the Moon Night isn't just about observing the moon. You can also explore and learn about other worlds in our solar system and beyond. Uh, we encourage people to start with the moon and launch from there into space science and celestial observation broadly. Next slide, please. Uh, so while this year's event will be somewhat different because of the current global pandemic, uh, you can participate in International Observe the Moon Night from wherever you are. You can attend or host a virtual or in-person event or observe the moon from home. You can reg register your participation and add yourself to a worldwide map of International Observe the Moon Night participants. All events are unique. We provide a lot of resources on our website, um, but this is an event that people take and make their own, tailored to their interests and needs and resources available and the needs and interests of their audience. So however you choose to observe, especially this year, um, please make sure to follow local guidelines on health and safety though. Uh, next slide, please. And I wanted to emphasize that International Observe the Moon Night uh, is a global event. So as the International Partnership Coordinator, this is especially important to me. Um, so people all around the world are invited to share in a celebration of lunar observation, science, and exploration. And since 2010, we have engaged with approximately 1.4 million participants in 107 different countries and in all 50 US states, Guam, Puerto Rico, and Washington, DC. Uh, so next slide, please. In uh, 2019 alone, we reached an estimated 255,000 participants in 102 different countries and all 50 US states Guam, Puerto Rico, and Washington, DC. This year, we'll also have some, some people participating from Antarctica, which is really exciting and it's a first for the program. So this is a great event to participate in and connect with people worldwide. Next slide, please. We want everyone everywhere to observe the moon, but we want people to interpret the word observe broadly. So you can look at the moon with your naked eye or through a telescope, you can observe it with your fingertips in 3D printed models. You can listen to the moon through songs or stories. You can even taste models of the moon after you create phases with chocolate sandwich cookies. You can also observe the moon through art, such as paintings or sculptures or dances, or you can make your own. International Observe the Moon Night is a great opportunity to highlight lunar science and exploration and the moon in arts and culture. So next slide, please. 
Uh, we have made significant updates to our website, including registration, event search, and our resource collection to accommodate more individual, small group, and virtual participation. Um, next slide, please. In particular, uh, we are featuring activities that make it easy to participate safely in International Observe the Moon Night at home or almost anywhere. These activities are suitable for a variety of age groups and they are easy to adapt for use with whatever materials you may have available. And I'm going to talk about three specific ones in detail, but if you visit our website, uh, you'll find a lot more activities and resources. Next slide, please. So the first activity that I'd like to highlight is our call for lunar inspired artwork. We invite you to share and submit your lunar inspired artwork um, for this year's International Observe the Moon Night. People can submit their creations to our official Flickr page, which is shown here at this link, using the tag Observe the Moon Art upon submission. We'll be looking at submissions through the actual date of International Observe the Moon Night, uh, so this Saturday, and likely for a few days afterwards as well. And we encourage you to interpret the term artwork broadly. These works may include multiple forms, such as moon poetry, writings, paintings, sketches, graphic design, or moon observations from telescopes. We want to see all levels as well. Children's drawings, sketches, poems. You don't need to be a professional artist in order to participate. And these are just a few examples of some of the artwork that has been submitted thus far. So next slide, please. So these are some moon poems that uh, someone has submitted. So you can see that there are a variety of submission types. Next slide, please. Here's some different kinds of moon and space themed paintings. Next slide, please. This is a pretty cool creation with bottle caps used as the phases of the moon, which is kind of cool. Next slide, please. And this is a lunar craters that's been printed with lunar data that someone submitted. Next slide, please. And this one is actually one that I submitted uh, it shows a dragon appearing in some lunar data, which is kind of fun. Next slide, please. So the next activity that I'd like to highlight is our Sketch the Moon Together activity, which you can do with your family or friends. This activity explores how the moon's appearance changes over time. By using this moon observation journal to sketch the moon, uh, people discover the lunar phases and realize that the moon doesn't always look the same in the sky, nor is it always visible. You can also submit your moon journals to our call for lunar inspired artwork that I just mentioned. Next slide, please. Another activity that I'd like to discuss is our moon photo challenge bingo sheet. This is a fun and interactive activity that you can do with your kids, friends, or on your own in a virtual setting. The goal is to have people take a picture of themselves completing each of the moon challenges from the sheet. We also encourage people to interpret the challenges creatively using whatever materials um, they may have available. Next slide, please. So all the activities I discussed and more are listed on our website, um, which is provided here. Um, and if you click on the activities tab, that will bring you to a page dedicated to all the activities I mentioned, along with further details for each activity and ideas for additional engagement. We also have other resources available on our event website for anyone who would like to participate. This includes a moon map, a moon viewing guide, pre-made flyers, posters and illustrations, a cert certificate of participation, and much more. International Observe the Moon Night is a great opportunity to share your own work and lunar enthusiasm with your family, friends, and community. You can try one of the activities I mentioned earlier with your kids, look for features highlighted on our 2020 event moon maps, or point teachers, librarians, or other educators in your community to these resources. Next slide, please. International Observe the Moon Night also provides an opportunity to connect with fellow lunar enthusiasts around the world through our Facebook page, the hashtag Observe the Moon across social media platforms, and the official Flickr group, where you can browse and share moon-inspired art and photos. 
And this has been my life for the past few weeks. And it's been quite entertaining to get up in the morning and see the new submissions um, from people around the world. So it's really cool to check out. And next slide, please. So International Observe the Moon Night is a Goddard-led program. And this year, the Goddard Visitor Center will be hosting a virtual event on their Facebook page and on the NASA Goddard YouTube channel this Saturday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. The event will feature engaging pre-recorded content, including presentations, demonstrations, and a few video clips, and a dedicated Q&A with Goddard scientists and engineers. In particular, there will be a discussion on geology and the elements of art, a presentation on the SOFIA mission and its connection to Artemis and lunar water, and a demonstration on volcanoes and how to build and erupt your own volcano at home. Next slide, please. This year is also an especially an exciting year as we'll be having a live broadcast on NASA TV, which the Goddard event will be a part of. The live International Observe the Moon Night event will air on NASA TV and can be viewed on NASA Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So the program will begin at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, and then it'll transition from one institution's event to the next, going from Goddard on the East Coast at 7, and then ending with Survey on the West Coast at 11 p.m. Eastern. Now the full program schedule can be found on the website by going to the Participate tab and clicking on Live Streams. Next slide, please. You can learn more, register your participation, find recommended activities, and much more on the International Observe the Moon Night website. So we hope you'll join us for this year's event, whether that be through the Goddard Visitor Center's virtual event, the live NASA TV broadcast, or with family, friends, or individually observing the moon. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. that was awesome. Um, for me personally, I'm gonna be camping with my family this weekend, and so I'm very much looking forward to observing the moon and hopefully dark, clear skies, uh, and also playing the bingo game you mentioned. I think the kids will get a kick out of that. Um, so fingers crossed for um, for clear skies, wherever you happen uh, to be. Uh, and as Stacy mentioned, there are lots of opportunities to um, engage and participate in International Observe the Moon Night through NASA TV um, and through Goddard's social media channels. So definitely check that out if you are able to. Um, so we are now going to transition to taking uh, questions. So if you have a question for one of our speakers, please uh, do enter it into the chat box. And while everyone is um, working on that, I'll give everyone a chance to uh, put those questions in if they have one. Um, I do have um, a couple of questions myself. Um, and so the first question I am actually going to pitch to Carolyn. Um, so Carolyn, how much of the 2023 annular eclipse might we be able to see from the DC, Maryland, Virginia area? Unfortunately, you have to travel <laughs> uh, because it's going from the Pacific Northwest to Texas and we will miss out. Yeah. OK, all right, we'll have to add that to my uh, to my calendar then to take a trip to see some of my friends down near Johnson Space Center. Yeah, um, let's see. I don't see a question in the chat box at the moment. Um, so I am going to ask another one. Um, Trina, I know that in 2017, GLOBE collected data from eclipse observers around the country. What did their data tell us and will there be a similar effort in 2024? Great question. Yes, we were very, very excited to help the eclipse team. So on our app, we actually had people submit temperature temperatures that were in the path of totality and also temperatures were, that were not in the path of totality. And we did notice some temperature changes. So we're going to do the same. We do the same for all the other eclipse events. So we did see some temperature changes. Great question. Thanks for asking that. Great. Thank you. Um, let's see. We do have a question from the audience. Uh, Derek has asked, will the issues with the fake solar glasses be addressed by NASA? So I'm assuming he's talking about um, some of the glasses that were sold by various groups in 2024 and wondering what steps might be taken, or excuse me, not 2024, but 2017, 
and wondering what steps might be taken in 2024 um, to keep that from happening. So Carolyn, I will let you take that one, please. We are working very closely with AAAS and uh, Rick Feinberg is wonderful. Um, there are uh, international uh, standards that the manufacturers have to show. Um, not sure how we will control um, the sales online. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, something that is a big concern, but um, look for the uh, certified glasses and, and ISO standards. Great, thank you, Carolyn. Um, definitely good advice to, to make sure that uh, you know, the glasses that you pick are as safe as possible and also to help family and friends who may not be as aware um, of how to tell, uh, you know, good glasses from not so good glasses, uh, how to do that. So thank you. Um, and then Stacy, I did have one question for you as well. Um, so you mentioned that International Observe the Moon Night is also an opportunity to um, observe things in the sky beyond the moon. So can you tell us more about what might be visible this Saturday evening? I think you're muted. Of course. <laughs> so both Saturn and Jupiter uh, should be visible that evening. Um, and you can see Jupiter is quite bright, so you can just see it with the naked eye. Um, Saturn is also bright, not as bright as Jupiter, um, but they're both night or naked sky objects that you can observe. Um, so I like I like that it's kind of cool. You can start with the moon and then go on to talking about other planets, which is always kind of fun. Um, and then there's, of course, deep sky objects that are visible with more sophisticated technology. But yeah, <laughs> thanks. Great, thank you. Um, and we did have another question from one of our audience members. What phase will the moon be in for International Observe the Moon Night? Right, so it'll be just after first quarter moon. Um, so we like to pick the first quarter moon because the terminator, the line between light and dark, um, is nice uh, because when you look along that line, you'll see the crater is put into really nice relief um, rather than that full moon where you can't see as many features because the moon is too bright. Um, so it'll be near first quarter. Great, thank you. Um, and I see that one of our other participants uh, put in a couple of links to some um, peer reviewed papers actually that use the 2017 eclipse data from GLOBE um, that Trina uh, addressed a few minutes ago. So thank you for that. Um, let's see, I don't see any other questions for our speakers at this time. So I just want to thank you all for, um, for your presentations today for all the work that you're doing to share NASA science and Goddard science and programs with the public, um, especially during this um, different time that we're in right now. I know that you guys, like uh, many, uh, many, all of us actually um, here at Goddard have had to, to pivot to, um, to be able to um, continue um, to do your work and you found new and, and exciting ways to do that as well. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for everyone who tuned in today. Um, for the presentations, we really appreciate it. And thank you for the questions and the comments in the chat box. Uh, and again, thank you to Travis behind the scenes putting this all together. And again, if you're able to, please join us um, for our next Engage session, which will take place on Monday, October 19th, featuring Osiris Rex as it prepares for its tag or touch and go sample collection event from Asteroid Bennu um, the next day. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great weekend.